Pokemon people, my name is Meech and welcome to the SCORE channel. Today we're going to show you how to study in the UK. Despite Brexit and a global pandemic, there are actually more international students in the UK than ever before. One in four students comes from abroad. You can too. The UK has some of the best medical schools and law schools, and their degrees in business are to die for. Obviously, since you're gonna be surrounded by a version of the English language, you're gonna get a lot better at English too. Like other European countries, you can get your bachelor's in three years in the UK, although it could take you longer if you decide to do an honors program. That's honors with a U. Fancy people looking to study at Cambridge or Oxford will need to have their applications done by October 15th. Likewise, medical schools typically have the same deadline and everybody else typically puts their deadline around January 26th. But still, you should double check with each university to make sure they don't have a different deadline for your program. A very important rule in the UK is that you can only apply to five universities in the same year. To apply to those universities, you're gonna use the UCAS system. This is the central portal for all admissions in the United Kingdom. So what do universities in the UK require? Bad news, the UK has some of the toughest entry requirements in the world. One of our students, she was trying to apply to a foundation year to get into medical school and they literally told her that even for a foundation year, her Peruvian diploma was not good enough. Damn man, I want to escape from Latin America so bad. I just want a good future. Just like the one this core program will give me, Call now if you want to secure your future too. Anyways, let's see what a UK college answered to my email. The Peruvian phobia is stronger each day. Alessia has a totally cool YouTube channel that you should check out, so go over there and subscribe. And then when you're done, subscribe to our channel too. Universities in the UK ask for A-level grades or an equivalent to them. A-levels are basically classes that you take in the last couple of years of high school if you live in the UK. Most students take three of these courses and so you'll see universities asking for grades in three letters. For example, they might ask you for an AAA grade. That means you got an A in all three of your A-level courses. If you don't have A-levels, the only way you're gonna be able to get admitted is by showing them your current high school diploma and your transcripts so that they can see if your grades are good enough and if the courses are equivalent to A-level courses. Of course, all of your transcripts and diplomas need to be translated into English by an official translator. So if the university that you want to study in doesn't take your country's education, what you'll need to do is look for foundation year options or ask them about the possibility of doing a year at university locally and then transferring abroad. All right, you got your high school diploma, but you're still not done. There are a ton of entry exams in the United Kingdom. To get into medical school, you have to take an exam like the BMAT or UCAT. Law schools ask for the LNAT. If you're studying a mathematics major, you're probably gonna have to take the STEP test or the MAT. And on top of that, you might have to take general admissions tests like the thinking skills assessment. We left a link in the description with all the different exams that you might be asked to take. So check those out and make sure you check each university's page carefully. Fortunately, there is no minimum age requirement. So as soon as you graduate, you can start trying to apply. As as long as you speak English. The UK's English exam system is a little tricky. Most UK universities will tell you that they take the TOEFL or the IELTS or even the Duolingo English test for admissions. But there's one big problem. If you need a visa to enter the UK as a student, which is pretty much everybody after Brexit, then you have to take the IELTS. I made a video about this a while back about how the United Kingdom still doesn't consider the TOEFL a secure English language test. And neither is the Duolingo test. If you're trying to get into the UK, you might see that a university says they accept it and they do and they will admit you but then when you try to get your visa at immigration they're gonna say you don't have an approved English test make sure you take the IELTS academic UKVI. UKVI stands for United Kingdom Visas and Immigration. The test itself is exactly the same as any other IELTS academic. The only difference is that the queen herself has inspected the facility and determined it is safe. Imagine having a queen in 2021. Like, really? As far as IELTS scores go, you'll probably need to get a 6.5 maybe a seven on the IELTS for more demanding programs. Check to make sure there's no mandatory minimums. You can skip English tests if you've got high grades in English A high level, or maybe a perfect score in English B high level. Again, if you're not convinced about whether you should take the IB or not yet, you should do it. It makes this a lot easier. If you want to study in Welsh, 
for whatever reason, I can't think of one, but maybe there is one, I don't know. There are actually over 500 programs in the UK for you to study in Welsh, and you can even get a scholarship of 3,000 pounds if you decide to do it. As far as actually living in the UK, some people worry about British English, and while it's clearly the inferior form of English, it's not that difficult to get used to. Since British people don't know how to spell words correctly, and they also refer to singular nouns as if they were plural, as long as there's like multiple people involved, like when they say, my team win. God, I hate that so much. You know there's one team and then there's two teams. Two teams compete on the field. Two teams are. One team is. It's basic grammar. Sorry. I'd rate the language barriers two royal family scandals out of five. Freaking British English. More bad news. Financially speaking, the UK is one of the most expensive countries to study in. It's right up there with the United States and Australia. There is very little, very little, financial aid for international students. Finding a scholarship as an international student is like finding good food in the UK. It's almost impossible. Like, this is what passes for food. But don't worry, there's still hope for you, my people. Even the UK has fish and chips, right? So there are good scholarships out there. The Alukari scholarships are funded by a Malaysian NGO, but they're available to citizens of any of these countries. It's a long list. And they can give you up to 20,000 pounds if you want to study at the University of Warwick, and even up to a full 70,000 pounds scholarship at the University of York. Kingston University also has a scholarship that gives you 5,000 pounds for your first year. And then there's Cambridge and Oxford. These are in a class all their own. They do have quite a few scholarships, but they are extremely competitive. If you're coming from Latin America, check out the Carlos and Gabriela Rodriguez Pastor Scholarship for Cambridge. But even with financial aid, and even if you look for very affordable programs, as an international student, you're going to spend at least 20,000 pounds on tuition alone. That's about $28,000 in real money. And that's on the low end. The cost of living doesn't make it much easier. Although you do get some discounts on things like train travel if you're a student, you don't get a lot of help anywhere else. You need to budget at least a thousand pounds a month, if not more. You're looking at spending around 35 to 40 thousand pounds a year if you want to study in the UK. It's not cheap. And the UK knows it, and that's why you're going to have to show it if you want to get your visa. UK Immigration Service does post the specific number that you need to show if you want to come to study. They ask for £1,334 per month if you're going to study in London. Everywhere else, they ask for £1,023. Citizens from these countries are technically not required to show proof of funding, but they could be asked to at any time during the process, so be ready to do so. There's also a £348 fee for the visa itself. On the bright side, the visa does last for the entire duration of your stay, so you only have to do it once. Your university is going to do a lot of the work for you. They collect all of your documents and then they tell the government that they have approved you. So that means you don't have to do a lot of embassy visits. All you got to do is give your information to the university, they'll send it to UKBI, and then when your visa is ready, you can go to the embassy and pick it up. Make sure your documents are perfect and that you comply with every single requirement. If you want to learn more about how the UK visa system works and some of the problems that it's had, you should check out my video on the TOEIC scandal that we did a couple of months ago. Thousands of students were basically illegally deported from the country, and you don't want that to happen to you. If you'd rather study in a country that has more freedom, then I suggest you check out the video on how to study in the USA. And that, my people, is everything you need to know to study in the UK. I'll see you next week.